Okay, let's get going. I'm Barry Nussbaum. I'm Jewish. I'm a passionate Zionist. I'm a conservative. And like the lady just told you, I'm the son of two Holocaust survivors that walked out of Auschwitz in January 1945. In Hungary in the 1940s, my mother used to tell me that her father told her that the problems in Poland were over there. And in Hungary, we were safe. And her father told her that every time she came home crying from school because she was worried because dark clouds were coming and the Hungarians ignored them. And she ignored it and her father ignored it and her mother and brother and sisters until the Gestapo pulled up in their front yard and collected her father and her brother and took them to Auschwitz and they were never seen again. Later, my parents went, my aunt went, my cousins went, and only my parents and one aunt came home. The rest are in the ashes that you saw at Yad Vashem, at least symbolically. The message for you, and this is not gonna be a happy speech, is I want to empower you as warriors. Because if you think there aren't enemies of God out there, you're naive. And naivete can cause your demise. And what I'm going to do as fast as I can talk to give you data, which is what we do every day at American Truth Project, is give you data. Because you need to know who your enemies are so you are empowered to do something about it. If you don't, it's your fault. I'm gonna give you the data, and then it's up to you to do something with it. Because there's so many people that are ignorant about Israel, about Christians, about freedom, about liberty, and about democracy. And they're coming for you, because you're believers. You believe in a Bible that half the world thinks makes you their enemy. And given the chance, they will kill you. Don't for a second think otherwise. This is not a cartoon, this is the real world, and I'm gonna give you the data to do something about it. So let's get started. My lovely wife and I have raised a number of children, two of which are now Israeli. And Josh and I talked about it. They're lone soldiers. They have moved to Israel, they have made Aliyah. They are citizens of the state of Israel, and they will fight to defend Zion. I want to make you symbolic soldiers like my children, my daughter, and my son. I found an American Truth Project to be able to send that message out to the world. We put out two and a half million messages a month. And if any of you are interested in the data I'm gonna give you now, take out your cell phones, and I'm gonna tell you how to get that message for free every day and I'll pay for it. All you have to do is have a cell phone. You take your cell phone out and you type in one word, truth, in your message service, T-R-U-T-H, and send it to 88202. In about seven seconds, you'll get a message back from New York that confirms you as a subscriber. It's free, you'll never get charged, and every day you'll get Israel information that you can use to defend Israel. I'll repeat it at the end if you didn't get that. Let's talk about the threats. I've heard a couple people mention. The first one is BDS. Who knows what that means? I want you all to know what this means. It stands for boycott, divestment, and sanctions against the state of Israel. The purpose, according to the founder of BDS, a man named Omar Bagudi, is the destruction and elimination of the state of Israel. So every time in the press you read about BDS, remember the words of Omar Bagudi, we will remove Israel from the face of the earth. And every member of that movement around the world, especially in American college campuses, has the same goal. Don't for a second think it's anything of that because the guy that founded it, he said that's his goal. He says it every day. It's on the internet. It's not a secret. You don't have to dig it up somewhere. 
He puts it on Google daily. What is BDS and what's its purpose? They say it's to create a fairer state for the Palestinians. That's the official line. And they say it's a new movement to eliminate apartheid in Israel. How many people have been to Israel? Oh my goodness, I'm so happy to see those hands. Men and women walk down the street together as equals. Men and women vote. Men and women have jobs. Men and women can fight in the army, as my friend from Israel just mentioned. Supreme Court, Prime Minister of the state, doctors, lawyers, politicians, business people are women, not covered in a sack, making them a second class citizen. They have the equal vote, not one quarter of a vote, not one half a vote like in Islam. They are equal to the men. The only country in the Middle East where a woman is equal to a man is the state of Israel. For those of you who know history, apartheid was a disgusting status of second class because of skin color and race. You couldn't vote, you couldn't own property, you couldn't go places, you couldn't have a certain job, you had to go to a certain restroom, you had to drink out of a separate faucet, you had to get on a different bus, you couldn't live in a neighborhood. That's apartheid. Don't you ever let anyone tell you that Israel is an apartheid state because they are a liar, and most of them have never been there. In fact, what they normally say is, well, I read it on the internet, or I saw it on the news, and you know what? It's BS. Go to Israel, get the truth, and then tell people. Don't you ever let anyone tell you it's an apartheid state because they're liars. Period. And if you let them lie, the lie persists. And then they tell 10 friends, and those people tell 100, and now 10,000 believe it's an apartheid state. Please don't let it happen. But it's all over college campuses. Coast to coast, if you have children going to American universities, there are gonna be demonstrations on every college campus. My sons, who went to university in San Diego, after going to Jewish school, who spoke Hebrew, who were bar mitzvah, who went to Israel, went to San Diego State and called me and said, Abba, which is Hebrew for father, there are people saying that BDS will fix Israel and they're on the campus and they're handing out flyers everywhere. They're on every college campus. Now, you might ask yourself, well, that's nuts. Where did that come from? And it's one simple word, money. I'll read you where the biggest money comes from, from college campuses, two college campuses, that cause BDS to be everywhere. And you wanna know where it comes from? Muslim rich countries. They have an agenda. The agenda is to destroy Israel, to make Christians second class citizens in the Middle East, and don't kid yourself, in this country. There are more people running for office today. My background is politics. In this country, that want to institute Sharia, which are the dictates from Muhammad from 1,500 years ago than you could imagine. Several of them today sit in the House of Congress that refuse to condemn the genocide in Armenia where hundreds of thousands of men, women, and Christian children were crucified and slaughtered in their villages for one simple crime. They believed in Christianity. And my favorite member of the House of Congress, and I'm saying that facetiously, Ilhan Omar, stood up in Congress and refused to vote last week to condemn the Armenian genocide of Christians where perhaps over a million were slaughtered in the fact of two years, in the face of two years, and she wouldn't condemn it. Why? Because she's a devout Muslim who wears and, and acts 
and wants to pass laws making Sharia okay, where she says, well, you know, the burqa makes me an equal. No, it doesn't. It makes you a slave to your husband. Because if you study what I'm going to ask you to study right now, you'll change your viewpoint. I want to see a show of hands. Who's read the Quran? Shame on you. Shame on you. Buy a Quran in English. It's on Amazon. You can put it in your Kindle for $6. You are going to read the most horrific story you have ever read in your life. You believe in God? You're going to wonder how God let this happen. Do you know in Islam, if that man's married to that woman, he can beat her to death. Because he owns her. She can't own property. She can't drive a car. She can't vote. She can't go out in public. She can't be on a custom, on a, on a company. And if she is, he has to beat her. And if she doesn't learn, he will kill her. And he will be absolved in a Sharia court. You think this is somewhere else? You think it's like my mom thinking it's in Poland? It's in America today. You see a woman walking in Lahaina or Kihei in a burqa? She's doing that because that's God's word. And she's owned by her husband. And he can do whatever he wants with her. Welcome to America, ladies and gentlemen. I want you to be warriors to understand the threat is here. Now, right now, wake up. If you don't, you'll be like my mom. God forbid, when the truck comes for her mother and her father and her brother, and they talk the Gestapo into just taking dad and the brother. So yeah, BDS is horrible. Let me read you where the money comes from. You ready? ready? Qatar. Qatar is the leading sponsor of terror in the Middle East outside of Iran. They gave $2.5 billion to American universities, spread over 28 universities where they endow Islamic studies. They write the curriculum, they fund the curriculum, they approve the, the professors, usually from the Middle East. Guess what they're teaching your kids? Here are the other countries, Saudi Arabia, United Arab Emirates, Kuwait, Iraq, Turkey, Lebanon, Pakistan, Venezuela, and Syria. They are teaching the agenda to your children, and it doesn't include God as you think God to be. And Christians, no thank you. And Jews, no thank you. Muslims, yeah, that's fine. And I'm not anti-Islam, but I'm pro-you. And in America, we should all be equal, not one over another. And we all ought to have the same rights. And if you don't do something about it, they're going to be gone before you know it. Let's talk about something else. Let's talk about the two-state solution. Who knows what that means? Okay, my Israeli friends know. Let's go back in time. The Balfour Declaration in the early 20th century decided that there would be a Jewish state. And the original declaration by Lord Balfour that was approved by the British Parliament because they were in control of the area after World War I when the Turkish Ottoman Empire basically lost the war was that there'd be this enormous Jewish homeland. And then they amended it by the 20s and the Jews were going to get everything from the river to the sea. Have you heard the word Transjordan? That became the country of Jordan. Transjordan means across the Jordan River. On the other side of the Jordan River was going to be the Arabs were going to go there. And from the Jordan to the sea was going to be a new state. And they were going to call it Israel. Judea and Samaria, which are across the Green Line, and the rest of what we know is Israel today. Judea is where the word Jew comes from. And that's the historical land of the Jewish people. By the 1960s, that was going to them. And it was taken away from the historical owners of that land, given to them 
3,000 years ago. Read the Bible. The history is there. So you might say, well, the Palestinian people deserve a homeland, don't they? Okay, here's one for you. Who knows what a Palestinian is? Anybody? I'd ask you to stand up, but I'd embarrass you. And here's why. There is no genetic, historical significance to the word Palestinian unless you're Jewish. The word Palestinian comes from the Philistines, and the Romans named Israel Philistina to destroy the connection of the Jews to the homeland of Israel. Because they destroyed the temple and they kicked the Jews out. So they renamed it thinking, well, the Jews won't want to come back if we put a crappy name on the place. But the Jews believed God gave it to them and they came back anyway. Where did they come back to? Palestine. In 1948, when the state of Israel was founded, the major newspaper was the Palestine Post with a big star of David, published in Jerusalem. It was a Jewish newspaper. Palestine Post. The flag of Palestine had a big Megan David on it, Jewish star, star of David, shield of David technically, because it was Jewish. Where did the word Palestinian come from? I'm going to shock you. I don't think anyone's heard of this. You know who made it up? Any guess? Anybody? The KGB. It's a historical fact. You can look it up. They brought Yasser Arafat, a murdering terrorist who had killed thousands, to Moscow, and they came up with the idea, if there's an indigenous people, you'll have a homeland to fight for. And they made up a history. If you read the Palestinian made-up history starting in the late 60s, do you know who's Palestinian? Everybody in the Bible. Including that guy you might have heard of, Jesus. Mahmoud Abbas, the president of the Palestinian Authority, who also goes by Abu Maz in his nickname, says it all the time. Jesus was a Palestinian. Bethlehem is Palestinian. Jerusalem is Palestinian. And get this, they say it every day in the media. Please use the internet. It's all there. Jerusalem is a Palestinian town for 3,000 years. Never mind the fact that it was made up 30, 40 years ago, because it was. This is invented history. And our universities, which are funded by Arab states, teach the Palestinian history. That was made up last generation. It's an invention. It's a fiction. And don't get sucked into it. Who's been to Bethlehem? The Christians have left. There's almost no Christians in Bethlehem. They've been driven out by a Palestinian mayor, an oppression of the Christians there, so it's unsafe to be a Christian in Bethlehem. Are you kidding me? But if you've been to the Church of the Holy Sepulchre in Jerusalem, and I hope you go there, it's protected by Israeli armed troops 24-7. A terrorist can't get near that holy site because it's protected for Christians. That's what Israel does for our brethren, you. And if you let the Palestinians rewrite history, that won't exist either. Do you realize Arabs are indistinguishable from other Arabs genetically? They are tribes. There's hundreds of them. There's no Palestinian tribe. There's no Palestinian history. There's no Palestinian hierarchy of Ancestry.com. The founder of the Palestinian movement, Yasser Arafat, is Egyptian. Do you hear me? He wasn't even born in the land of Palestine. He was imported and crowned by the KGB because the KGB felt it would divide Egypt from the United States and it would give them a divisive way to get into the politics of the Middle East. And you know what? It worked. Because you 
not you personally, but you Americans and you EU and you UN bought it. So the current leader of the Palestinian Authority, Mahmoud Abbas, was elected in 2004 for a four-year term. He's still president. In the Arab countries, when you leave office, it's because you're in a box. There are no elections. There's one election. You get in by the ballot, and you get out by the gun, or you fall over dead. His successor is crazier than he is, although not as big a murderer. Yasser Arafat died probably of AIDS, from what I was told, because he had a proclivity for some really disgusting behavior, and I got that from a very big source. Mahmoud Abbas wrote his thesis. He's the president now. He's the one that got elected in 2004 and is still there. On the cooperation between the Nazis and Zionists, and he proved in his thesis that the Holocaust didn't really happen. And he got his PhD in Russia. And he's the leader. Now here's what's interesting about Mahmoud Abbas. Who knows what pay for slay is? You mentioned it. The Palestinian Authority's budget is open to public scrutiny. Why? Because you, and you, and you, and you that pay taxes are funding it. So we have access to it. Half the budget per year given by foreign sources to the Palestinian Authority pays, you ready? For murder and terror. The best way for you to make money in the Palestinian Authority is kill a Jew, blow up a Jew, attack a border guard, or some other terroristic form. And if you survive and go to prison in Israel, where you get three meals a day, and don't worry, they're kosher, which means they, they fit the Islamic definition of good food, you make more money than a doctor or a lawyer or a government official, or anybody of repute with an education in the Palestinian territories. Half their budget goes to terror. And the first president of the United States to do something about that was Donald J. Trump. Mahmoud Abbas came to the White House and told Trump, oh, well, that's just blown out of proportion, but don't worry, we'll stop it. And Trump said, you better, because if you don't, I'm going to cut the money off. Mahmoud Abbas went back to Ramallah, where their headquarters are, and within six hours was on Palestinian media saying, we will never stop the martyr, martyr fund. We will always pay our martyrs until we conquer and rule from Jerusalem. So Trump said, fine, I'm cutting off the money. And he did. God bless him for that. Now we need the EU to do the same thing. And when the money cuts off, the terror will stop. I'm gonna go back to the two-state solution because I'm getting told I gotta to shut up soon. <laughs> the deal of the century is coming. We don't know when because Israel doesn't have a prime minister in the near future for long term. I was gonna talk about the elections, but we don't have the time. So I will tell you this. If you've ever been to Israel, I offer the following half an hour trip for you. Get on the road, I can't remember the number, my Israelis will know, that goes up north and south along the border barrier pa parallel to Tel Aviv. What's the name of the highway? Is that six? Two? Okay. Six is the new one? Okay. Okay, so I was on six with a major in the IDF. And I said, stop me when we get parallel to the power plant in Tel Aviv, which he did. We got out of the car. To the right was the wall. It's a great wall. The reason I call it a great wall, I'm not copying Trump, I'm quoting Israelis. Bibi Netanyahu told me to my face when we had a very long meeting some years ago. If we build a wall, we will stop suicide bombers. And he was right. 
suicide bombers getting into Israel from the Palestinian territories that dropped, get this, 99%. Anyone tells you walls don't work, they don't know. Go to Israel, it works. If you stop on six, the highway, and you look left, the right, the wall's right here, 10 feet. You look left, you can see the Mediterranean Sea. You get what I'm saying? Israel is that tiny in the middle. And if God forbid some maniac on the other side of the wall has a grenade launcher, an RPG, and hits that power plant, Israel could go dark. The whole middle of the country where most Israelis live. And here's something even more terrifying, that Israel is paralyzed with fear over, although they won't say it publicly. If God forbid, and you can see Ben Gurion Airport, where the jumbo jets from all over the world are taking off and landing, a jumbo jet on approach is the most undefended target in military history. One grenade can bring it on a jet, kill 400 people, and tourism to Israel would stop in five minutes. Because the world would be terrified to get on the next flight. Two-state solution, according to Jimmy Carter, Bill Clinton, and George Bush, and my favorite president, Barack Obama, would give them that territory without Israeli military in it to protect Israel from it. If there was an election tomorrow in the Palestinian territories, according to the polls that came out last week, you know who would win? Not Abbas. They know he's stolen billions, just like his predecessor, Yasser Arafat. Hamas would win. A terror organization that kills every member of the opposition to stay in power. That major I told you about took me to the God's offense. And I filmed there. And you should go to my website. You'll see it. There's a building. It's four stories high right next to the fence in Gaza City. You know what they use that four-story building for? They throw off their enemies. Usually, there's no Christians. There's no Jews. They throw off people who belong to Fatah. Fatah is the political party of the PLA, the PLO, Palestinian Authority. They throw them off the building because they don't die right away. They let them lie in the street until they die, and they don't let the family come to take care of them as an example to what happens to you if you're not for Hamas. That is the political party that will win in the West Bank. And what should Israel do then? These are people that say, we will hunt down and kill every Jew in the world. Their leader says it all the time. The good news about having the Jews in Israel, look this photo, is they're all in one place. We can kill them quicker because they're all in Israel. And we're glad they all came, so we will kill them there. So look, I'm not trying to bum everybody out. I'm just trying to educate you. I don't want you to be my mom in the front yard of her house in Budapest. I want you to be a warrior like the children we raised. You want to fight for Israel? You don't have to pick up a gun and be a lone soldier. You can do it with your mind, your mouth, your internet, your cell phone, and tell every friend you know that you know the truth. And you want to fulfill biblical prophecy like this young lady here is talking about. God bless you for that, what you're doing to support Israel. I'm truly grateful for what you're doing. Because if you don't fight to protect Israel, you're also giving up on your own way of life because they're here, ladies and gentlemen, and they're running for office. There's 400 of them running for office right now. And they believe in Sharia. And please do me two promises and then I'll be quiet. Number one, please buy a Quran and read it. A good English translation will cost you between six and eight dollars. If you're not horrified, you don't speak English very well. It is the most horrific story you've ever read. And billions of people in this world believe it and follow it. As if it was the Gospels. And you are Dimmy. You are non-believers. And you will be converted by the book or by the sword. 
because Muhammad prophesies that. And that means you will accept the Quran as your Bible or you will be with the sword. You understand? You have two choices. Those are the only two choices. Number two, please text 88202 to truth. I'm sorry, text truth to 88202. You'll get this every day. You'll become warriors for Israel. We have 800 videos on our website. You'll probably get tired of seeing my face. This one will be on by next week. At least you'll be educated. So, the prophecies that you want to fulfill by supporting Israel, by going to Jerusalem, by creating a nexus between Hawaii and Israel, will happen. But there will be resistance. And what my coaching was today was to have you educated on what to do about it. I think we'll win because we're the good guys.